Hey guys, in this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a glowing planet on a space background using nothing but Photoshop filters and a single texture. At the end, we'll also add a glowing text effect using layer styles. Let's get started. So first we'll create a new document, and we'll make that 1920 by 1280 and hit OK. And then I'm going to fill the background with black. Next, I'm going to come up and click Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And I want to have the amount set to 85%, the distribution set to Gaussian and monochromatic checked, and hit OK. Next I'll come up and click Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then set the radius to 0.3 pixels and hit OK. Next I'm going to come over and add a Levels Adjustment layer, and I'm going to bring the black stop up to about 140, the center stop to about 0.25, and then the white stop down to about 230. And that'll give us a nice even star field background. Next I'm going to come down to my project files and open one of my textures. And the first thing that I want to do is crop it into a square format. So I'm going to reduce the width to match the height so it's a square. Next I'm going to right click that texture in the layers palette and convert it to a smart object. That part is important if you want to be able to come back later and use different textures with your planet. Next I'm going to come up and click Filter, Distort, Sphere Eyes, and I want the amount set to 100% and the mode set to Normal. Then I'm going to come up and click Filter, Sphere Eyes up here at the top, and that will reapply the same Sphere Eyes filter that I just applied. Next I'm going to come up and click Layer, Vector Mask, Reveal All. Then I'm going to come over and choose my Ellipse tool and select Path up here in the top toolbar. Now my canvas is 3744 pixels so I'm going to click on my canvas and Photoshop has a limit of 3000 pixels for some reason so I'm going to create an ellipse that's 3000 by 3000 pixels and then if I come over here and choose the Path Selection tool I'm going to click and drag that path to the center of my document, right click it and free transform path, and then up here at the top I'm going to select pixels as my measurement and increase the size to match my canvas, so 3744 pixels. And then hit enter a couple times to finish your transform. Then I can drag this path and snap it into place so it's directly in the center of my document. Now it's masking off my texture layer so it looks like a round sphere. Next I'm going to right click that layer again in the layers palette and convert that to a smart object. So I have a smart object within another smart object. That way I can come back later and change my texture without having to redo these steps. Next I'm going to right click that again in the layers palette and choose duplicate layer. And for my destination I'm going to choose my working document and hit OK. Now I can close this and you can hit no, you don't need to save it. So back in my working document, now I need to resize my new planet. So I'm going to click one of these handles and up here in the top I'm going to choose pixels again and set it to the same width as my document which is 1920 pixels. And I'm going to drag it into place and snap it horizontally, that way it's centered in my document and then drag it down just a bit so the bottom part is cut off and hit enter. Next I'm going to apply some layer styles to my planet, so I'm going to double click that in the layers palette to open up the layer style dialog. So first I'm going to add an inner glow, and for the color I want to sample one of the lightest colors from my planet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one of the light areas to sample a color. Then I'm going to set the blend mode to linear dodge, the opacity to 75%, the size to 100 pixels, and if you want you can check the anti-alias checkbox. So I'm going to click my color again and copy this hex code and I'm going to go ahead and add an outer glow. So for the blend mode I want to set it to linear dodge, the opacity to hundred percent, the size to 50 pixels, and then paste my color in so I'm using the same color for both the inner and the outer glow. Next I'm going to create a new blank layer and I'm going to select my brush tool and make sure that I have the hardness set to 0% and the size set to about 800 pixels. 
Using the color white, I'm going to center my brush at the top of the planet here and just click once. I'm going to set the blend mode for this to linear dodge and the fill to 35%. And then I'm going to right click that layer and select create clipping mask. That way my glow layer is only affecting the planet and not my background. Next I'm going to come over and choose my ellipse tool and make sure that I have shape selected in the top toolbar and I want to switch my foreground and background colors so I'm using the color black. So I'll click on my canvas and I want my lips to be the same width as my canvas so I'm going to make it 1920 by 1920 pixels and hit OK. Then using the move tool I'm just going to drag it in place directly over my planet until it snaps into place. Now you can leave the color set to black but if you want a more subtle effect you can change the color to a really dark brown. So I'm going to set that to 0D0805. So it almost looks black, but you can see here in my color picker that it's not. You'll be able to see that change a little bit later. Next, I'm going to click one of the handles to enter free transform mode. And I'm going to resize this black circle to 2,250 pixels. And you want to make sure that you have this little link button checked so the width and the height remain the same ratio. So I'll hit enter twice to make my transform and then I'm going to drag that down a bit so it's just covering the bottom part of my planet. Up in the properties panel I want to make sure and click this little icon here which is the masks icon and then I'm going to set the feather to 65 pixels. Now you can see that my vector circle is feathered a bit so it looks like a shadow on my planet. Lastly I'll set the blend mode to linear burn in the layers palette. Next, I'm going to create a new layer and fill it with black. Then I'm going to come up and click Filter, Render, Lens Flare. And with the brightness set to 100%, I'm going to choose Movie Prime. And I'm going to click and drag that flare to where I think the top of my planet is going to be. Then I'll hit OK. And set the blend mode for that layer to Screen in the Layers palette. You might need to redo this step a couple times to get your flare in the right spot. Next I'm going to repeat this step using a different type of lens flare. So again I'm going to create a new layer and fill it with black. And come up and choose Filter, Render, Lens Flare. And the position is already saved and this time I'm just going to choose 105mm Prime and hit OK. And again change the blend mode from Normal to Screen. For this flare I'm going to set the opacity to 85% in the Layers palette. Next, using the Type tool, I'm going to create my title text. So I'm just going to make it say, Planet Earth. And I'm going to scale that up a bit. And center it in my document. And the font that I want to use is called Franchise, which you can get at LostType.com. I'm going to click this button here to make sure everything is uppercase. And then I'm going to scale it up just a little bit more. And set my tracking to about 200 and move this down in my document a little bit. Next I'll double click that text layer to open the layer style dialog and I'm going to give it an inner and outer glow. So first I'll give it an inner glow and I'm going to set the color to white, the blend mode to linear dodge, the opacity to 100%, the choke to 10% and the size to 7 pixels. For my outer glow I'm going to choose the same white color, set the blend mode to linear dodge, the opacity to 100%, the spread to 5%, and the size to 21 pixels, and hit OK. I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate that text and move it down a bit. And then I'm going to type in my subtext. So it's just going to say, where will you go when the world ends? And then I'll resize that maybe to about 64 pixels and move it into place. Next, all I have to do is right click the effects in the layers panel and choose scale effects. I'm going to set the scale to 50% and you'll notice that all my effects get scaled down so I don't have to reapply them from scratch. Next, I'm going to come over to my layers panel and come down just below my planet layer and create a new blank layer. I'm going to use the brush tool at about 800 pixels again making sure that my hardness is set to 0% and using the color white I'm just going to paint behind my planet to brighten up these flares. I'm going to set the blend mode for this layer to linear dodge in the layers panel. Next I'll create another blank layer just under my planet and this time I'll fill it with black. Then I'll click filter, 
render clouds, then again filter render difference clouds, and then I'll choose filter difference clouds at the top to apply that filter one more time. Then I'll set the blend mode of that layer to overlay, and the fill to 35% in the layers panel. And that'll just add a little smoky effect to my flares up here. Back in the layers panel, I'll go all the way up to the top of my document, and down here at the bottom, I'll click this icon and choose gradient to create a gradient fill layer. So if I click on my gradient, it'll open up my gradient editor where I can change the colors. So for the first color, I'm going to set that to 008 AFF. Then I'll set the location to 25%. For my second color, I'm going to set that to FF8C2F. And this time I'll set the location to 35%. You also want to make sure that both of these opacity stops are set to 100%. I'm going to set the angle to negative 90 degrees and hit OK. Then in the Layers panel, I'm going to change the Blend Mode to Vivid Light and change the Fill to 20%. You may need to adjust your gradient depending on where you placed your planet in your document. The idea is to make the flare look blue and the planet look orange. That's pretty much it. Since a lot of these steps use smart objects and adjustment layers, you can easily go back and tweak the settings until you're happy. So if I come down in my Layers panel and double click my planet layer, and then double click the smart object to go back into my original texture. I can now drag another texture in, and if I scale that in, and save both of these smart objects, you'll see that that new texture is automatically applied to my planet with all the effects that we created earlier. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.